If so, it's time to discover a revolutionary approach to overcoming internal obstacles that are preventing you from getting what you want. If you're ready to be inspired, challenged, and transformed as we explore a new way to achieve success and fulfillment, you're in the right place. So let's dive headfirst into this life-altering adventure together. Now, I'm sure all of you have experienced this, right? You're going about whatever it is that you want to do. You're working towards something. You have a goal in mind, a vision, a plan. And as you're going through it, you experience something that is hard to explain. It's like there's something inside of you that doesn't want you to succeed. Maybe it comes up in a very subtle way where you find yourself procrastinating and you don't know why. Or maybe it's very in your face where it feels like there's a voice or something, some strong feeling inside of you that just says, "Uh, uh-uh, you're not going anywhere. You're not going any further. My, one of my experiences, probably the most troublesome was this feeling of like walking toward the horizon. And as you walk toward the horizon, what happens? The horizon keeps moving back. You know, it's not like you can gain any ground there because it's the horizon. Of course, it's a, it's an illusion, right? But I felt like that for a long time in my life, that any progress I would make would immediately be taken away from me in some way. For example, maybe I'd get a bonus of $1,000 from my job and then my car would break down. And guess how much it would cost to fix my car? <laughs> it would cost $1,000. And I was like, here was an opportunity where I could have gotten you know, a little bit of ahead. And w- what happened here? You know, What's going on? And it felt like that for the longest time. Make a little bit of progress taken away from me. It can feel like you're really at war with yourself. It can feel like there's a part of you that's really trying to sabotage you. And as long as you keep thinking of it that way, I assure you, that's the way you're going to experience it. It doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. So let's give this thing a name. We'll call it resistance. And some people might want to get more specific and call it inner resistance or internal resistance. It's all fine. It's the same thing. Sure, there may be people outside of you, you know, <laughs> everybody's outside of you, but there might be pe- there might be people who don't want you to achieve what you want either. And you could say, well, that's a form of resistance. Maybe so, but that's not really what you have control over. So we're not going to focus on that on this live. You can, sure, there's ways to deal with people who are like that. And unfortunately, um, as you progress and succeed, Many times there are there will be people in your life who are jealous and they're not even aware of it. They don't realize it and they will try to hold you back. They're, they'll say underhanded things or backhanded compliments. That's a whole different subject on its own. That that's that is there, but uh, we're not going to cover that. And that also sometimes can be part of your inner resistance. You might feel like if I do something great. The people around me, maybe maybe they'll abandon me. Maybe they won't be my friend anymore. I've had a, a client one time who felt that way. Uh, we were working on helping him lose weight, and he had a tremendous amount of resistance to doing it. And one of the reasons why was because most of his friends were overweight, and he was afraid that if he lost weight, they wouldn't be friends with him anymore. So we're going to talk more about inner resistance and what might be coming up for you and what you can do about it. And the first thing that pe- most people do when it comes to their inner resistance, and this can show up, like I said, and, and it can come up as a feeling, it can come out as a voice, it can kind of blindside you and suddenly you realize you've been on TikTok for you know, three hours wasting time and you go, what, what just happened? What, what happened to me? Or Netflix or you know whatever, you're binging something. And so a lot of people will try to ignore their resistance. They don't acknowledge it. Uh, whatever that is, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, just, it's nothing. It's really nothing. I'm just going to uh, push it aside and I'm going to ignore it. Yet, when you ignore something, 
you tend to push it into unconsciousness and anything that's in unconsciousness has more power over you than things that you're conscious of. Why is that? Well, you can't change what you aren't aware of. So if you aren't aware of it, it has more control over you because you can't stop it. You can't make a different choice. And so many people will ignore their resistance. They won't acknowledge it. We have this thing in personal development where you always have to be positive. You always have to be optimistic. And that kind of forces people to sometimes ignore the problems that they need to deal with. And they're afraid if, oh, if I engage in that, if I acknowledge that I have some resistance here or a problem or something that's getting in my way, then that's going to make me vibrate at a lower frequency. And if I do that, then I'm not going to get what I want. And this is just really not how we want to approach this. What you ignore has more control over you. So we want to acknowledge it. What's going on? I'm experiencing some resistance. I want whatever it is that I want. And as I try to move toward it, something seems to be holding me back. Okay, let's first admit that. Let's acknowledge that. Let's not ignore it. Then what's the second thing that most people do once they can acknowledge that they're experiencing some resistance? You try to fight it. You fight back. Now I'm going to do a whole live on discipline and willpower. So I'll cover, I'll cover that, the fighting of this. When you fight your resistance, what are you actually fighting? You're fighting yourself. You're at war with yourself when, you're fight, when you fight your resistance. I used to read books on how to fight your resistance, how to defeat your resistance. And now I look back on those books and I was just like, okay, that just fed the problem. That just held me back even more, this idea of fighting my resistance. But we love these analogies. We love these ideas about like power and war. I'm a warrior and I'm, you know, I'm going to war for my art, for my creativity or for my business. A lot of this stuff is really unnecessary. And the last person you want to fight is yourself. That's not helping you. So when you can acknowledge your resistance, you may feel that knee jerk reaction to fight the resistance. I'm going to defeat it. Relax. Don't fight your resistance. You're just going to be fighting yourself. And that's just going to hold you back even more. It's going to slow you down even more. It will dilute your attention and your focus. And ultimately it's just going to wear you down. Now, I spent most of my life doing this and everything that I was going after, I would get into a fight with myself because I wanted more or I was obsessed with whatever it was that I was doing. And anything that got in the way, bulldoze over it. And there's lots of personal development out there, a lot of personal development gurus who recommend doing exactly that or that's what they teach. And all I got out of that was worn out, beat up, failing at what I wanted to ultimately do not getting the result that I wanted, feeling hopeless and helpless. So none of these things, fighting my resistance never worked. And I see people when I coach them, or even when I'm teaching and training, I see people doing this. And all I want to do is help them relieve, <laughs> relieve that just by telling them, okay, and I'm telling you, if you're experiencing that, the best thing for you to do right now is just relax. Just relax. It's going to be okay. And fighting it, is not the answer. And it gets even worse when you have people saying things like, well, what that's about for you is that you fear success. I absolutely hate this saying. And I don't know how intentional or consciously aware people are when they say this. I think for some people, they've just heard it and they go, oh, well, I must have a fear of success, my own success. And I think some people repeat that to other people. And then they, it's well-intended. They mean it. They, they mean well. But it's something they've heard, they thought was useful, and so they repeat it. And it's really unfortunate because none of you fear success. Nobody fears success. 
you may fear change and you may perceive success as a change that you're not sure about. It's not the success, it's the change that you may be afraid of. But it's really profitable to introduce a problem to people that doesn't really exist and doesn't have a solution because it will cause their followers to chase their tail trying to find that solution to a problem that doesn't exist. And when they can't find it, can't find that solution, they go back to the guru and say, okay, how much does it cost <laughs> to get rid of this problem? And a guru, so-called guru, can string you along for a very long time trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. They're the ones who introduced the problem. They're the ones who introduced the riddle that tied your brain in a knot and got you nowhere. So let's talk about well, what is the truth about resistance and what can we do about it? It's because it's so much easier than what you think. It's so much easier than what you've been doing, I assure you. Now, before I do that, uh, I just noticed somebody posted in the comments uh, live, and I should have mentioned that before. Um, so those of you who are here right now, uh, obviously you're here live with me. Would you type live in the chat box? And then later when people are watching this video and you're watching me and you know that this is a replay because you're not here in real time, please type uh, replay. It's just very helpful for us um, to sort of figure out what is what, uh, what, what kind of content do you want? When do you want it? So we know how many people are showing up when we're actually doing this live and then how many people watch it later. Uh, we're always looking to optimize the content on this channel to give you exactly what you want, when you want it, and as often as you want it. So we're gonna we're gonna be diving into this um, after the thirty days to see how this went. So I really appreciate that, by the way. All right, well let's continue. So what is the truth about resistance? The truth about resistance is it's really just outdated software mental software. Think about it like this. If you were on a computer right now that was running off a of Windows 95, how well do you think that computer would be running right now? Do you even think you could access this video, this live that we're doing right now? No, of course not. Windows 95? <laughs> that was almost 30 years ago. So many things have happened in nearly 30 years with technology and computers and how much the software in your computer is like 100 times better, faster in every way than say Windows 95 or whatever we were using back in 1995. So it's not that your computer, if you were trying to run off of Windows 95, it's not that your computer wanted would want you to fail. It's just that it couldn't handle it. You need to update the software. You need to update the computer. And that's what resistance is. All resistance is, is outdated software that you have not upgraded. There's a part of, there's parts of us that we give orders to, commands to. I, I feel embarrassed whenever I'm, I'm, in, I'm in third grade and I, and I experience an embarrassment. Maybe the whole class laughs at me for something. And then I tell myself, don't ever let that happen again. And because it feels really bad, we, are, we naturally move away from something that feels bad, right? If I touch a hot stove and I feel the heat, I don't even have to think about it and pull my hand away. And this is hardwired into, this, into us biologically for survival, to move away from pain. But what happens when the pain is emotional pain? That is coming from within. Well, we usually respond to it or react to it the same way. We pull away from it. We try to isolate it within ourselves, block it off, wall it off. We tell it, don't ever do this again. And then we block it off and wall it off. Now, emotions and feelings, really negative ones, will do the same thing that even really good feelings will do. What, what happens to a good feeling over time? You experience um, 
maybe something adventurous, something that's a lot of fun. And when the experience is over, there's still that feeling, but eventually it dissipates. That's normal, right? Negative feelings are the same. If we allow them to dissipate, if we allow them to evolve and we don't try to isolate them, that feeling will pass. But we don't, we, we don't, haven't often understood that throughout our entire lives, especially when we're younger. So we experience something negative. We try to create an imaginary boundary to block ourselves from experiencing that pain. And so it gets locked and isolated and it never has, it doesn't evolve and dissipate like all feelings should. And we also, from that point on, function from a place of avoid that, avoid that feeling, avoid any circumstances that might bring that feeling back again. So when we fail at something, especially early in life, and we have that negative feeling, and we tell ourselves, don't ever let this happen again, this feels terrible. And we wall that part of ourselves off, and now going forward, we try to avoid that feeling at, by any means possible, which means now we have a new limitation. And so later, when we've completely forgotten about this feeling, we've even maybe even forgotten about the incident that caused the feeling, when we go to try to succeed at something, something in us says, and it's very unconscious, says, wait a minute, if we do this, we could fail. And if I fail, then this part of me that I gave the command to, to never let this happen again, also fails. And then we have this awful feeling. So it's a multiple failure. <laughs> And then these really negative feelings that come from, come out of that, exactly what we're trying to avoid, exactly what we don't want to feel. And this is what's getting in your way. And this is what we call resistance. It's actually a part of you that is trying to fulfill a value for you. It's trying to do something for you. You gave it a negative command though. And you said, don't do this again. Don't let this happen again. So it's hard to move toward anything positive when you do that. You're, you're telling yourself to avoid it. So what needs to happen here? This part needs to be integrated back into who you are now, not isolated from you. Because what you're also missing when you do this, when you isolate a part of yourself, you're losing out on the resources that that, that part contains as well. And we don't feel whole, we feel divided. And this is where we get into that fighting ourselves. So what do you think works better for you to not only achieve what you want, but also to experience fulfillment? All parts of you integrated, working toward your fulfillment, right? I mean, what could be more powerful than that? You would be unstoppable if you think about it. If you have no resistance, no resistance whatsoever, toward moving toward the life you want to create for yourself and becoming the person you want to be. Being completely, feeling completely whole and aligned and congruent with doing that with no resistance. Would anything stop you at that point? No, nothing would stop you. What we perceive even as external obstacles usually are projections of our internal obstacles. And anything that's unconscious, anything that we're blocking out, anything that we're repressing or suppressing often turns into a projection. We have to acknowledge it in some way. So we project it out there and we say, well, the economy is holding me back. Or the, my childhood experiences are holding me back. Or we make up whatever reason, anything external, especially of why those obstacles are holding me back or those limitations are holding me back rather than looking to well, what's going on inside of me that might be holding me back. So take radical responsibility for whatever limitations you have, whatever resistance you have and realize, okay, I'm creating this. There's not, it's not about blame and shame. That's not going to help either. Just acknowledging, 
you're creating this and if you're creating it this is very empowering because it means you can change it so when you're going about attempting at least to move toward what it is you want creating the life you want uh, achieving a goal creating the you you want to be and you experience resistance like i said don't ignore it don't fight yourself relax welcome it accept it let it know that you value it because it's a part of you you understand now that it's a part of you and all parts of you are valid there's no there's no bad parts all parts of you are valid and ask it what is it trying to do for you what is its positive intention for you now a lot of times if you're if you especially if you're new to this work that part's not going to be ready to talk because you've been pushing it away for so long you've either been ignoring it or fighting it or both and it might not be ready to talk so you have to keep opening that space for it and this makes a great meditation by the way so keep creating that space and that acceptance of this resistance of this part of you that's resisting stop judging it if you judge it it'll go away so stop judging it be open to it acknowledge it as a part of you and then keep asking it what are you trying to do for me i know you're trying to do something positive for me what are you trying to do what is your positive intention and you'll be amazed sometimes how it will come right out in very specific words sometimes it won't though sometimes it'll come out in, in a feeling and then you'll have to interpret that feeling into words and that's it's not really hard you'll get some intuitions you'll get some insights now most often the part will come out stating whatever it is that it wants for you in the negative like i don't want and the reason for that is because that's based on the orders you gave it probably when it happened and again a lot of this stuff happens in childhood so you probably said something like i don't want to feel this again so make sure i don't feel this again that's what you've programmed the part to do so the part is going to come back and tell you well here's my role here's my job my job is to make sure that you don't fail and one way that i do that <laughs> is i never let you try to succeed because if you never try to succeed then you never fail maybe that's its strategy and you often find that a lot of times these parts are very young because like i said this happened this often happened in childhood and so these parts are very young and they will often kind of behave or act or talk like so or have logic like a child whereas whereas some things should you know to you would seem completely obvious to this part it's not because it's been isolated from the rest of you it's been disconnected so when it tells you i don't want you to be disappointed i don't want you to fail i don't want you to be embarrassed and it's telling you what it doesn't want for you which is in a sense is positive it's just stated in the negative it's framed in the negative you need to get that reversed and put it into the positive positive. and so the question would then be to that part if you don't want me to fail what do you want for me instead if you don't want me to be disappointed what do you want for me instead if you don't want me to hurt what do you want for me instead so get it stated in the positive and this is new it's new for this part and by the way I've had people when I worked with them on this break down in tears right then just by acknowledging the fact that this part had no negative intentions that this part had po only positive intentions and some people right then and there will just kind of break down like I th you know I, I I judged and demonized this part for so long and then found out and then I'm now I'm finding out uh, there's no part of you there's no part of me that wants me to fail there's no part of you that wants you to fail there's no part of you that wants you to hurt. There's no part of you that wants anything other for you than to be fulfilled, to fulfill some sort of value. That's what an intention is, is a value. You can use those words interchangeably. 
fulfill an intention or fulfill a value. So once it's stated in the positive, so some other things just might be like, okay, I don't want you to fail. What do, what do you want for dead? I want you to succeed. Okay, great. I want to succeed too. We share a common value. The part says, I don't want you to be disappointed. What do you want instead? I want you to be happy. Wow, okay, I want to be happy too. So what you're always going to find is that the resistant part and your conscious self always shares common values. So maybe it doesn't go straight to a value. Maybe it says, you know, you say, you know, I don't, part says, I don't want you to fail. You say, what do you want instead? And it says, you know, I want you to achieve things. It's kind of vague, um, no, nothing specific that it wants you to achieve. And then you say, okay, well, what is important to you about me achieving things? And then it's going to go to a higher value. And that higher value might be like success, joy, happiness, passion, any of those things. So you want to get it from something specific into a value because what it specifically wants for you might differ from what you actually want. It might specifically want you to go back and you know, to a, a breakup, <laughs> someone who broke up with you and it hurt. And in, in, in this part's mind or this part's intention might want you to get back with that person. But this is like years and years later and there's no going back. And so you have to say, okay, well, what would have been important about me getting back with that person? Well, you would have been happy. Okay, great. Happiness is the shared value. So what we're looking for is the shared value between this unconscious resistance and your conscious self. You will always find that success, happiness, achievement. You will find the common value. <clears throat> and when you find the common value, you're, you're right about, you're on the cusp of integrating this resistant part. You're on the cusp of bringing this part in. And the last step, but probably the most important step is to explain to that part that in fact, what you're trying to do, whatever your goals are, whatever activities, whatever strategies you have, is to serve and fulfill the same value that this resistant part is trying to fulfill for you. The resistant part, its strategy is usually avoidant. It's trying to help you avoid the negative feelings, but you can't really move toward a negative. And if you're focused on what you want to avoid, you tend to create more of that. So you get it to reorient itself toward the positive. Well, if that's what I don't want, what do I want instead? And maybe I need to chunk up to a higher value. What would be important about that? And you will always find that common value. And then explain to the part what it is you're trying to do, your goal, your strategy. And that in fact, exactly what you're trying to do leads to the fulfillment of that same value among other values, probably. And there's probably multiple values, but that's one of them. Success, happiness, joy, of course. Of course you want all those things. And so once you explain that and form that part, now it, it's going to have a better understanding that in fact, you're not fighting each other. You, you're doing the same thing. You're after the same thing. And then, like I said, the last and probably most important step is to ask the part if it would like a job, if it would like to play a role in what it is that you're doing by helping you make sure that you fulfill that common value. And that you're listening to it and that at any time if you're not in alignment with that value ask the part that its job that you want it to do is to give you a message to let you know hey i'm you're off track get back on track and then ask the part will it be willing to take on that job that role and then see what happens next that usually completes the integration. I have never in my own experience working on myself or working with clients did that part say, I know, no, I don't want that job. That's all that part wants. All that part wants is to be a part of the whole. All that part wants is to help you fulfill the value that it's been trying to fulfill for you. And by asking it to come along and play a role in what you're doing, 
You're just asking it to rejoin the family. You're asking it to help you be more whole and go at this thing that you're going at in a more whole way. I've had people again, melt down right there and just break down because that, that fine, finally that these two parts coming back together after many, many years, it's like a homecoming and people go like, finally, you know, like they feel more whole, more complete, no resistance, not fighting themselves. And this might not be the only resistance you have. There could be lots of resistance, lots of parts that are isolated. And I do not recommend doing a witch hunt and trying to go and find all your resistant parts and integrate them before you go and go after what it is you want. Don't do that. Because that'll just be a, that'll take forever. It'll, you'll just be like trying to do this cleanse and perfection and no, 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 don't do that. When you decide what it is that you want and you start moving toward it, if there is resistance that is worth integrating, it will come up. <laughs> It'll let you know that you're that, it, that it's there. And now from this point on, after listening to what I've been saying about this, you will be waiting for that. You'll be listening for it. If it doesn't come up, great. Go full step ahead toward what it is that you want. But a lot of times resistance will come up. And anytime resistance comes up, that's an opportunity to integrate that resistance and become more whole and complete. And it's very simple and it is amazing when it happens. And the more you do this, the more you go after what it is that you want, the more resistance will pop up, the more you will integrate that resistance and the more you will become more alive, more complete and more whole. And you'll stop fighting yourself and you'll stop ignoring and suppressing and repressing these parts of you. And the more you do this, the more you will want to do, the more energy you will have, the more you will gravitate to doing more and more and seeing what's possible and fulfilling your true potential. And when you remove all resistance out of your way from doing, for, from going toward what it is you want, you're unstoppable. Nothing can stop you. All right. So in conclusion, your resistance is not something that's trying to hold you back from succeeding or being happy or getting what you want. Think of resistance as an unconscious commitment to one or more of your values. All of your resistance, no matter how nefarious it might seem, has a positive intention for you. It's trying to fulfill you in some way. So what needs to happen is your conscious mind and your unconscious just need to reconnect and integrate that resistance. All right, before I get to some of your questions, I'll take a look at those. Um, one thing that we found in our trainings is that after something like this, after a lecture or teaching, when you <clears throat> write out your big takeaway from this, it really solidifies it. It helps you take that learning with you in an even deeper way. So, and I'd love it if you post that as a comment here. So if you were to post a comment here of what your biggest takeaway has been from this live, that would be awesome. I'd love to hear, I'd love to see a read and believe me, I do read them. I'd love to read uh, what your big takeaway from this is. And it also will help you really solidify what you've learned here. All right, let's see what we've got here. I acknowledge it and accept it, but it won't say why he doesn't want to do it and move forward. So be careful of asking why questions. When you ask yourself or other people why questions, the tendency is to build up even greater resistance to formulate the, or uh, solidify the objection. So you don't want that. Just ask it, what is your positive intention? What is it you want for me? What is it you want me to know? What is it you want to do for me? I would not ask it why. If you ask it why, it gets, it, like if, when people ask you why a lot, you get defensive. That question, that that word tends to make us defensive. So the same goes for your parts. So ask it a different question. What is important to you? What is it you want me, what is it, what is your positive intention for me? 
So where's the line between focusing on what you want versus what you don't want and awareness of your internal resistance. So I would say be aware of what you don't want, but put your focus on what you do want. So it's the difference between awareness and focus. Be aware of what you don't want, be focused on what you do want. And as you're moving toward what you want, if you experience a feeling or a voice or, you know, like those critical voices, that's resistance. Feelings of fear, that's resistance. But like I mentioned yesterday, fear doesn't have to stop you. Fear, don't try to get rid of fear. Just experience it and go, okay, what is it telling me? All right, and then move on. It's just there to, to bring your attention to something. But if you're feeling, if it feels like it's holding you back, anything that you feel is holding you back is resistance and that resistance needs to be integrated. So I don't fear success. I think I fear failure. Yeah, it, that's normal. It's normal to fear, fear failure. You don't fear success. If I put, if you were starving and I put your favorite plate of food in front of you, you wouldn't go, gee, I don't know if I can do this because I really fear succeeding at satiating my hunger. It'd be ridiculous. Nobody does that. But it's interesting that people oftentimes wrap this up in their identity. Uh, f they go into this, you know, full on belief that they have a fear of success and they invest in it mentally, emotionally, and even monetarily. And it's like, oh man, you just, you're not going to go anywhere with that. So it's, it's a false problem. So it has no solution. Uh, let's see, shadow work. Uh, how do we integrate it back? Okay, I think I already went through all that. Okay. Mine is two years old and it won't say what it wants. Okay, just keep working with it. Keep giving it the space. You can actually be your own family within. Yeah, definitely. Okay, awesome. Biggest takeaway, start being friends with resistance instead of, instead of doing something to it, listening to it, hearing it, helping it to archive, or I think you mean achieve. <laughs> okay. Uh, radical of sec acceptance and forcing the part integrated it. Forcing the part integrated it. I'm not sure what you mean by that last part, but I, uh, yeah, you want to integrate the part. No, no forcing. Okay. Love that you guys are writing that out and putting that there, uh, putting out your big takeaways. It's very important. That'll help you solidify it in your mind. Take that learning with you when you give it words. Keep them coming. And I will see you tomorrow. Make sure you check uh, the notifications when we're doing this. They're not always at the same time. So make sure you're checking the notifications. Really awesome that you're here. Really appreciate sharing this with everyone and doing this all together. Take care, everyone.